كيف Let me go. Yeah, and I'm going to copy the link as we go live. So give. Um, I think somebody's in the waiting room. Okay. Remember to That's put your phone right. on silent and not wait, wait, please. Yeah. So we, we actually live. Um, right. So any phones put on mute. Um, yeah, correct. For the vibration purposes. All right, so we actually live though. Um, so just want to say good night to everyone that is on the show. Um, welcome yes. to the debrief TV show. Um, and we are happy to be here with you as always. Um, tonight is going to be an interesting show, and we are here earlier than we anticipated. So, as usual, I always like to beg for your indulgence. Uh, well, we share the link because we are using technology and uh, so we have a very good show for you tonight. We have a, a, a diverse panel and we wanted to. So there's a number of persons asking if the show has started uh, for those who are on. Yes. And we would like that you share uh, the show so that we can get those that are eagerly awaiting us to um, join us. And just let me go ahead. Don't forget to sign link um, to the chat, Kimar. I am doing so now, sir. I okay, am doing great. so. All right. Um, so just give me one second, because there's a million and one people asking for the link. Um, okay, the link is there. I for can't see. I can't see. The, I can't see nobody else's camera. Today. Pardon? Our oh, camera's on. Okay. I can only see me. I can't see. Oh, that's probably your right, setting. You got at the bottom. I see. I see, Mr. Denny. Um, all of us are. On um, you got to You got to press it. Don't get three dots. Oh, you're on your phone, so you're not, not going to see everybody at the same time. Not if you're on. Yeah, Mr. Denny. Mr. Denny is VC three. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. What? Yeah, what can I see him? Right. Once you're on a phone, you're not going to see all. But we are live, though, gentlemen. Um, just share the link if you can. Um, let me go. I I promise some. Um, organizations the link um i'm just going to share it with you um right now so you have the link um call drake if you want to go ahead i'm going to send you it as well so you can share it on your page uh, i know vc3 would like the link i'm sending it you're already live on vc3 oh well thank you uh we are so so wow, sorry there you go so as again, we're just begging your indulgence while we share the link to some platforms uh, that are waiting for us to be able to come on. And as I said, tonight we are going to have a very good show. We are live on um, VC3 and a number of other network. We're live on our own page as well. And we are asking you to where you can to share the link. Um, a beautiful good night to everyone, despite what the circumstances that we are facing and the challenges, we just want to say good night to you. Now, we have a very interesting panel here with us tonight. Um, sorry, just going to bring on Ashley John as well. He's joining us from St. Vincent um, as well. So I just want to introduce the panel to each and every one of you. You have uh, myself, Kimar Safri from Barbados. I'll be your host for the, the Debrief TV show. You have Mr. Anthony Denny, who is from St. Vincent and the Grenadines as well. He's also a part of the, um, I'll just give it proper introduction, Mr. Anthony Denny. He's production development officer of the Vincentian Cultural Connect channel, which is better known as uh, VC3 TV. We have yeah. Also, uh, uh, Jeremy and Beckford from Barbados. Uh, we also have Assemblyman Farley Augustine. He's from Tobago. Uh, he's an Assemblyman and also a, a member of Parliament, for better word, for those who may not understand. Call Drake Byron. He's from St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and he is actually um, a resident in there. We have Kimar Stewart, for our host, Simon Allen, also our host as well. And we are shortly joined by... Mr. Ashley John, who's a advocate NGO 
um, leader in St. Vincent. So we have a very diverse panel. We have some person from Barbados. We have a person from St. Vincent Grenadines. And we have some person from Tobago because we want to definitely look at a number of things and what is going on as it relates to uh, the volcano being er the volcano eruption in St. Vincent that is also affecting the region. Um, and when we say the region, um, none of us are exempted from it because Barbados is affected, uh, Tobago is affected, St. Vincent greatly affected, and a number of other Caribbean territories. And we thought to bring a show to you that would focus on the uh, impact that the volcano have in the region. And that is the reason for to, um, tonight's show, to bring you that and hear from other persons within the region, how they feel, how it's affecting them. And we hope to have a, a very informative show and one that could um, bring highlight to uh, the plight that is happening in and around the region. I'll first let Mr. Anthony Denny go first so that we can get, he's on the ground, uh, his team is on the ground. They have been keeping St. Vincent, Vin, uh, Vincent and the region abreast of the situation that is going on on the ground with the La Sopur, uh volcano. And um, he, they have a, their own TV show, their own channel. And so they are bringing us up live up to date. And if you have not followed them, you can follow them now as well. VC, um, VC3 TV, the, the number three, not the word. And you can see what they're doing out there to basically keep the, the population abreast. So thank you, Mr. Denny, for agreeing. Thank you, each and every one of you, for agreeing to be on this show. Mr. Denny, as the, as the team on the ground, can you please give us an idea of what you are seeing in St. Vincent? Well, first of all, let me, you know, thank you guys uh, for, you know, having us on, on, on your show this evening. And, um, you know, straight off the bat, um, it is not normal here in St. Vincent and the Grandines. We quite naturally undergoing an explosion of the last of Frey volcano. And uh, as I speak to you, there are approximately some uh, 17,000 persons who are not in their regular homes at this point in time, um, persons in the red zone. Um, what we have seen here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, um, you know, is an outpouring of love uh, from persons who are in the green zone. Um, there are quite a number of uh, families and friends who have accepted persons from the red zone um, to stay with them during this, you know, very disruptive stage. Um, as of yesterday, I don't have the exact figures as, as, as of today, but as of yesterday, there were some 3,718 evacuees uh, stationed in some 78 shelters across the country. Well, not across the country, but basically in the in the, the green zone. That's the safe zone. And that's where I'm at this, at this point in time. But, you know, just to give you a brief synopsis as to what has, you know, transpired, um, it has certainly been, you know, um, some rough days for us in St. Vincent and the Um, You and Barbados would have uh, certainly, up to yesterday, would have had significant ash fall. And such was the case, you know, for the last two days uh, here in SVG, where we, you know, would have encountered a huge ash fall, even in the, the green zone, the safe zone, um, you know, there was significant, significant um, ash fall for the last day or so. Um, and this is certainly, you know, um, as I highlighted, you know, accounted for persons being displaced, but I think the government has, has done a fairly good job in terms of, you know, first and foremost, providing the shelters, um, providing meals for, for, for that person. There have even been some situations where the elderly, um, it is difficult, you know, to house them in a shelter because they certainly need that um, care. And uh, several of the elderly have been housed in, in hotels and apartments uh, where they can get that love and care that is, that is you know, so, so very much needed. Um, on the volcano itself, at about 4.15 a.m. this morning, we had another explosion, and that explosion would have resulted in the um, destruction of uh, the two domes that were there. There was one formed uh, recently, and there was a dome from 1979. Well, those two domes have been obliterated, and uh, we now have what is what, a, a new vent um, currently at the Lasso Freya volcano. And apart from the fact that we've still been having some ash fall, especially in the red zone, we now have what is called pyroclastic flows, um, you know, where the, the magma, the lava comes out of the volcano and is now oozing down the side 
uh, of the volcano heading into villages. Uh, and, and that is a concern because certainly, you know, um, pyroclastic flows can create a significant amount of damage. Um, added to that, the, the, the ash fall um, has, has brought devastation to the plant life agriculture um, in the red zone where um, coconut trees and, and other shrubs, you know, um, you know have been um, fallen just by the weight of, of, of the ash on, on, on those trees. Houses have been damaged, um, roofs have caved in, uh, you know, because of the, the, the weight of the ash. And it is, it is just, you know, um, a time for us where uh, certainly we need all the help, you know, that we can get. And uh, I know a lot of countries in the region from far, well, and just to name a few, Antigua, Trinidad and Tobago, uh, St. Kitts of Nevis who pledged a million dollars, the government of Barbados, Grenada, St. Lucia, uh, they basically all come on board, you know, um, saying to us that they're very much willing to assist. Just today we had a, a ship uh, coming in from Venezuela, uh, stocked with a whole lot of items and, um, you know, to distribute to, to, to persons affected. And one of the things that, it is in huge demand. As a matter of fact, I'll say it's a high commodity item. It's, it's, it's like gold right now in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, water. And um, you know, the, reason, the reason for that is that the intake at our water supplies, the ash has sort of made that into a slush. And it's, you know, that slush now is not pr pr uh, allowing that flow you know, from the rivers right into the water intake. And because of that, um, the Central Water and Sewage Authority, they've, they've turned off, you know, um, taps. There is, a dis there is distribution that has taken place to the, to the, to the shelters and to communities. Um, but as you know, it, is, it can be as fast enough as, as um, you know, persons are, are asking for. And, and that is one of the areas that, you know, we really and truly need a lot, a lot of help. I'll pause here and, um, you know, just to hear from you guys. Well, uh, thank you. Um... Mr. Denny, we appreciate that feedback uh, from you of how it's uh, on the ground, what, it, what you're seeing, how, how it is impacting persons. Um, and you're saying that water is the like goal. And I, uh, um, I will hope that person will get on board and, and give. I know, yes, our prime minister is big hearted and she is making every attempt to give and to support and other CARICOM countries. Um, before I go to Byron, um, Assemblyman Farley, you're in uh, Tobago. How is it affecting um, Tobago, if it is also affecting Tobago, to what extent? And also, what is your country doing? I've heard things about your prime minister uh, willing to support as well. And I don't know if you can speak to that or to speak to uh, any other situation that you are also facing there as it relates to the volcano eruption. On mute. Hi, good night, everyone. Uh, brothers from across the, the Caribbean region. Uh, we are not physically impacted by the volcano, at least not at this point. Our meteorological department did indicate through our release today that there is a low possibility that we will experience ash fall. In fact, only a 20% possibility that we will uh, receive some ash fall. And of course, all of that will be dependent on whether the, the winds change the direction in which they're blowing. Notwithstanding that uh, we see ourselves as, as, as being impacted because we are looking at a neighboring Caribbean territory uh, that just like us, you know, we, we're struggling through the realities of the COVID-19 pandemic and the economic fallouts from that. And then on top of that, we are now experiencing a, a, a volcanic eruption that couldn't come at a worst possible time. Mm is ever a good time for a volcanic eruption. But given what has been happening with the global pandemic um, that we, we are all grappling with and the economic fallout of that, the, vol the volcanic eruption will no doubt make that worse. Early on, our prime minister, Dr. Rowley, who is also at present the, the, the current uh, chair of CARICOM, uh, mm -hmm. indicates that we are willing to help in whatever way possible. I'm happy that Mr. Denny began speaking about what the needs are, because as we go around the island of, of Tobago, at least, people are asking, well, what do, what do they need most? 
what should we send most? We already have Coast Guard and Army officials on their way to St. Vincent from Trinidad and Tobago. We already have families and churches and other social institutions are pulling things together to send to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Personally, I have been in contact with every Vincentian I know um, because I have quite a number of friends living in um, St. Vincent and the Grenadines uh, from Kamara Foster to Joel Richardson, who is not on the island, to mm -hmm. um, Shiva, who is in Antigua at the moment, but his family is there, to Atiba Providence, you name them, all, all everybody I could contact, I, I contacted them. Um, and uh, we are hearing the cry for water. So um, my organization, my political organization, we are in the process of actually uh, pulling all the resources we can together to get them across to St. Vincent as quickly as possible. But what's interesting in all of this is that I'm, I'm, I'm really hopeful that this is not just another uh, natural disaster that results in perhaps a temporary show of camaraderie and brotherhood and fraternity across the region. And it shows that as a region, we have to do a lot more in terms of how we collaborate to mitigate against natural disasters. And, and beyond that, how CARICOM actually works. And, mm -hmm. and so while we are not physically impacted, no doubt we understand that we will be, we will have to lend support, resource support, and to whom much is given, much is expected. We will have to lend much uh, resource support to the brothers and sisters in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We also understand that, uh, and, and for us in Trinidad and Tobago, many of us have relatives in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Um, if, if, if we, and, and I'm talking about people who could trace their grandparents um, to St. Vincent and the Grenadines, uh, meaning that we are so closely related because of uh, how colonization worked in, in, in Trinidad and Tobago, especially a lot of planters came from neighboring territories in the Eastern Caribbean across the Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. And so we have quite a number of correlations happening. And so if for no other reason, but the reason of uh, there being familial ties, we know that we will have to dip deep in our pockets and support St. Vincent and the Grenadines like never before, because it's difficult to imagine how you guys, Mr. Denny, how you guys, uh, Mr. Byron, how you guys are really coping uh, uh, with this. I mean, I'm already frustrated and fed up of all things COVID much more to consider a, a, a volcanic eruption happening on top of that and having right. to treat that. You know, that, that can be problematic, but we stand ready to help. Well, it's, 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 it's good to hear such, you know, and um, you, you mentioned the whole matter of the COVID-19 pandemic, um, which is, you know, affecting the entire globe. And we, we, we are feeling our fair share of it in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Um, of course, you know, with the last of volcano, I spoke about, um, already damage done to a, a portion of our agricultural belts in terms of, you know, forestry and, and things of the likes. And uh, coming out of all of this, this is going to certainly have devastating effect on, well, agriculture and ultimately the economy of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And when you put into the mix that we're not too far off uh, from the hurricane season, um, mm. don't know what the future holds. So um, it is going to be a very a uh, sticky road ahead for want of a, a better terminology. And, um, you know, anything that the region can do, the world for that matter can do to assist in Vincent and Grenadines at this time, of course, we would be more than pleased. Yeah, I, I mean, that's thing. Uh, Byron, as, uh, as a citizen there in St. Vincent uh, and the Grenadines, um, what's your take? What, is, what has it been like on the ground? Are you in the green zone, the red? Uh, well, you shouldn't be in the red zone for sure, but I hope not. Um, uh, Dr. I see Dr. John drop off. I, again, I know that person will experience technical difficulties on your end as well. Um, but what, what has it been like um, um, there, uh, Byron? Well, um, having lived and been in the red zone, the green zone, the impact has been very much... Um, scary mm -hmm. 
because from the time the, um, the order was given for evacuation on Thursday, we were all prepared in a, in a way. But I believe that some people did not take it that this eruption would have been that huge. And it kind of gets some people off track. But what I would say is that um, even in the green zone, we were badly affected by the ashes because if we have to be very mindful and in the area of um, where we are living also, there are a lot of um, persons who are asthmatic and that, that sort. So all that we are trying to do is advise them not to go on the outside because all like today, <clears throat> all it was cleared. There were a lot of um, high wind that was blowing and you could actually feel, see ashes were still blowing. And I believe that there was some sort of um, eruption again this afternoon. That's correct. And that um, still would have caused a lot of um, backlog because when I looked at um, in, in my community where I'm living, I recognized that parcels in a um, certain area like in Glen Prospect, Arnesville, Diamond, North Union, those mm -hmm. places were still out of water. And as I would repeat what Dennis said, um, it is of paramount that we really and truly get the support from our brothers and sisters on the other side of the fence, which would be Barbados, St. Lucia, Trinidad, Antigua. And mm -hmm. I know that in this trying time, we are our brother's keeper. And as someone would have said, I hope it's not just because of this um, volcanic um, eruption that we're just going to take it and leave it like that. We're going to continue to stick together as one Caribbean and we be a civilized people. Well, thank you. Thank you, um, Byron. Uh, one of the things that you, you like uh, hearing kind of is the fact that you, your same persons were not actually um, aware that this situation would erupt this big because persons normally, and I know a lot of people normally hear warnings and don't heed to them because of well, different and, and various reasons. And you're saying that this is something um, that some persons did not take like um serious seriously what is yeah what is it in terms of and both your um uh, mr denny can answer in terms of how is the evacuation how it is that how is that going right now in terms of people being evacuated and also we see we are seeing images as they pop up um have you guys heard anything um mr denny have you heard anything in terms of the evacuation how is that process well, well uh, from this afternoon um we i could have okay then you you go ahead all right. Well, you know, just to say that, you know, from the time that the order, I know that I said order, it was not a request uh, mm. by the government, by the prime minister for persons to be evacuated. It was an order mm. uh, based on the fact that, you know, the scientists would have said to us, Professor Richard Robertson, um, that a, a, an, an explosive eruption was imminent. As a matter of fact, within 24 to 48 hours, mm. um, Las Rafael lost its head uh, within a matter of uh, what, probably 12 hours or thereabouts, you know, following that, that, that order. Uh, but the evacuation process, um, you know, there was a little hiccup here and there. Of course, on the leeward side, um, there, were, there were boats that came in. Um, persons used their private vehicles. I must make a mention of the minibus operators. They, they would have done a tremendous mm. job, selfless job, um, you know, and, 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 and that in itself, you know, was certainly a, a, a good deed uh, by our minibus operators. Um, on, the leeward, on the windward side, I beg your pardon, um, the, the evacuation process was, was a fairly smooth one. You had the little traffic jams here and there, but by and large, you know, um, it, was a, it was a smooth process. One of the problems though, and um, persons haven't experienced 1979. I personally experienced 1979. I was a very little boy at that time. Um, but what I'm seeing now compared to 1979 is, is um, if I can use the terminology, cheese, cheese to chalk, it's really and truly, mm. you know, um, uh, way more than what we would have felt in 1979. And persons who would have experienced such uh, based that experience to decide whether or not they were going to move. 
And mm. there have been lots of instances where persons have regretted making, making such a decision. Um, on Saturday, our, our team went out to Rabaka and uh, we, we met a, a party um, making its way, well, we were into the red zone, but going deeper into the red zone to a place called Owea. And they mm. told us they were going to pick up three guys, um, persons who they would have asked initially to, 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 you know, to, to get out of the area. And they said no. But, you know, oh, when man. things really, really, you know, got tough and, and, and got worse, uh, right. they made a call for, for, for rescue. And mm -hmm. those are the kind of, you know, um, scenarios, um, you know, that we, we, we have had. But by and large, um, I should say um, the vast majority of persons have, have heeded the order and um, the evacuation process has been a, a, a fairly good one. Thank you. What is the um, mood like in the other part of um, St. Vincent? Because um, I know, obviously, in the actual red zone, um, persons would have moved out, um, moved into shelters and that sort of stuff. But what is the mood like in the, um, the, the, the eastern side of St. Vincent at this moment? Well, um, quite naturally, life has been disrupted, um, you know, but work still has to go on, I, I, I should say. But um, the, 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 the general mood, as I mentioned early on, you know, there's that outpouring where... Uh, Various persons in the yellow and green zones, they open up the doors, you know, to welcome in um, yes. um, persons. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I just cannot help going back to the whole matter of the water situation. Um, about half an hour before I got in your program, I, I, I got some calls, personally, personal calls. Uh, do you have any ideas to where we're going to get water back? Um, mm -hmm. I just have to remind them what was said by the, the CWSA, which is the, the Water Authority here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Um, but the mood generally is one of resilience. We, we are a resilient people. And okay. uh, I think one of the things that's one of the big pluses coming out of this one is the fact that our people uh, appear to be coming together on, on this mm -hmm. one. And this is so very, very much good. important, you know, going forward. I visited a shelter on, on Saturday um, in Calico, that's in the East St. George area. And the parliamentary representative, uh, Camilla Gonzalez, who is also the Minister of Finance, was present there. And also present um, was a lady who opposed them in the last general elections, um, you know, Miss Miss Velox, and she was there, you know, cooking. Um, the, the parliamentary representative was there, and and everything operated in unison, and that's that's a positive sign for us, you know, going forward in the land of Right. Oh, um, um, Jermaine, just Jermaine, oh. just want to get on uh, Dr. John before he lost yeah. back off because I know he's been on and off. Dr. John, um, oh. welcome. You know, I just want you to share with us. What are you experiencing on the ground? Uh, how has it been? I know you're a community activist. I know you're an NGO leader. You're a pastor. You wear so much hats. I don't have to call all tonight. Uh, but how has it been? Like I know you have some videos going on um, Facebook as well about the situation and the circumstances. How has it been going for you there as well? well good evening to all. Um, thanks, Mr. Safi, for having me. I'm good to see my colleague, Simon Allen there. from the, We work together at the Department of Emergency Services also. Correct. Um, Correct. Right, so I am uh, presently I am on Beckway. I'm not on the actual mainland at this time. And from mm -hmm. our end, what we are doing, we are trying to provide immediate relief to some of the persons who would have, would have been evacuated and so on. Um, we had, it was two days ago, yeah, we, we, um, Saturday was very bad down here. It was very difficult to breathe in Beckway. We had to shut in for like the entire day, I think to about four in the morning when the rain came. That's the only relief we really got in terms of proper breathing. Okay. Um, it was really terrible. We had to, and the Grenadines, you would know, including Bekwe, Kanawan, uh, Musty, Union Island, and, those, and Palm Island and so on. All of these islands rely on rain water harvesting for most of their water supply. And what, we, what had to happen was that all of us had to go and disconnect the, the, the um, things that lead into the tank from the roofs, right? And so all, we had a heavy rainfall Saturday and Sunday, but we could not preserve none of that because it would have been mixed with the, the whole ash and everything. So it, it has been a very daunting experience down here in terms of that aspect of it. But what we are focused on now is actually helping the persons who are more affected on the mainland. What we did, we were cleaning up. Yesterday, we spent part of the morning cleaning and recleaning because as soon as you finish, 
it was dirty within the net out. So you had to reclean again. Um, but the rain came more in the evening into the night and it kind of helped the situation. Today on the ground, I noticed a lot of people were still cleaning, um, power washing boats and buildings and so on. So a lot of that has been going on down here so far. Um, we've been liaisoning with, with, the, some, with persons on the ground in terms of the needs and so on, that the immediate needs. And um, I've been able to pull together a network of persons across the region and globally who have already started to help us in the first instance in terms of cash donations so that we, will, we are buying the items, for example, here in Bequia, what we can get here, and we are getting them ferried up to St. Vincent as early as tomorrow morning, some is coming up. Um, there are different drives going on here in Bequia. I know one is going on in Union Island. So we are trying to see how we could first you know, deal with the persons on the mainland that are actually heavily impacted. Our concern obviously is um, distribution and um, how do we ensure that these people get these supplies that they really critically need. Now I have been in, in disaster, I'm a community disaster manager for over 20 plus years and, and Simon could attest to this. And you know, I, I, I am a returning Vincentian also. And to be quite honest with you, I, I have had some very um, deep concerns about how these disasters are managed in our country. You know, I, I think that I, I heard Mr. Denny talking about, um, you know, giving a good picture about, he think it was well done, but to me, I think it was it was done too late and it was not very well prepared because you know this you had 40 plus bulletins and I remembered when the increase in the um, tremors started it, it became the speed was so much that I felt that that evacuation should have probably started around Monday instead of cutting it that close and you know because considering if the distance these people were at in the red zone the orange zone, the type of road structure we have, the, 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 the shelters, were, you know, and, and to get to them and so on. It, it created a lot of bottlenecks. And then what has happened is that the other thing that I think a lot of people overlook is that these people that are in the red zone and are in the orange zone especially are among the poorest named people in the island in terms of the poverty assessment. So you were, we were already in the COVID pandemic. A lot of these people were not receiving incomes or much income. And then this thing occurs suddenly on them. And then they had to rush into these shelters and no supplies. Most of these people went into these shelters, no supplies. The shelters were not ready. There are reports coming out of children sleeping on cold ground and, and elderly and so on. And you know, it is concerning that we knew about the, the, I remember when the professor from UE spoke about the, I remember when he gave his press briefing, he was very specific in saying, based on the data that they have, it is actually, you know, it is almost a yes that this thing is going to erupt. And I think that at that time from my disaster management training, right, you should have gone into another gear preparedness. And, and one of the things that disturbed me a lot was when I saw the list that was sent out by Nemo, after the event, I mean, like that to me is a no-no, right? I could understand there's gonna be a need for water and basic needs and so on, but based on the training that I have received, right? I know that we are supposed to have X amount of supplies on hand to roll out in, in, in the event of, of a disaster. And, and in my prolonged language, I thought that we were caught with our pants down, right? Well, I, 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 I beg to differ, um, you know, because you, when I speak about the whole evacuation process, that evacuation process quite naturally after the order was given, um, you, you spoke about, in your opinion, you felt that the order should have been given earlier, um, but you know the authorities had to be guided by the science, by those who have been observing you know, the, the volcano for the last three to four months. And um, you know, that, that, that indication finally came last Thursday, 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 Thursday afternoon. Um, I agree. The time frame, um, you know, a twelve-hour gap maybe was not sufficient. Of course, you know, to to have a smooth evacuation process. But you know what transpired once the order was given. Um, we saw persons coming together. We we we, we on the leeward side. There were boats available. Um, 
Yes, we do have our, our, our constraints, especially in Leeward side with regards to the road network. It's a little winding here and there. But, you know, have there been a casualty? Have there been a problems um, coming out of the evacuation process? No, there have not been any, any such problem coming out of the evacuation process. Um, with the shelter specifically, um, yes, there were one or two teething problems, you know, based on the time frame. Um, cots may not have been in place. Um, there might have been a shortage of food initially. That is not the case today. And uh, I, I still stick to my point that, you know, I, I think that the process was, was a fairly good one. Um, going on from there, um, Caldrey, um, what do you think as a, as a resident person here, as a person, how, how you feel that the process has went? I had to go on the go, sorry. What I think, right, is that um, from day one, since in 2020, when the Sufra has been given problems, there has been a lot of programs, a lot of community programs going out and how to get prepared. Mm -hmm. And having looked on some of the videos that were posted on social media, how people are running with two little some things to go to a shelter, it leaves me, I as a person, less speechless because I'm telling you, you have a volcano you do not know when it's going to be erupted. And the warning has been given umpteen times, put things in order. You cannot wait until the last minute. Preparation is the key to survival. And even if, even if the government were waiting on the scientists who is the lead person who give, it, give the advice, to say, evacuate. I think it is incumbent upon the people to have something in readiness. Because when you look at it, I'm being very honest here, that the apostles who are in shelter right now, and it is about three to four days, and you're lacking clothing. I know food and water would be a problem, but you're lacking clothing. But you should have something more sufficient. You cannot lay blame on you. When you look, put, put yourself in the picture. Who are you seeing? You're seeing yourself in the picture. And we have to be realistic at this thing. You cannot wait until the last minute to say, let me grab this, let me put things in place. And we have ample time to do things like that. And we cannot put it all at the feet of the post who's in charge of Nemo and those who are in charge of the shelter management. Because, you know, it is an evacuation. And when you go there, it's not going to be like you're going into a home. You have to have a mindset that when you get there, it's not going to be bread and cheese. Yeah. So I think that people, people, the mindset of some people, that they, they just careless when it comes to certain things. That's the point. Right. I, I, I agree there. Um... I, I want to say a point because um, here in Barbados, I think that apathy is also a big thing. You know, we've never really been impacted by a hurricane, for example. So I think sometimes people take preparedness um, for granted. So I could understand where you are coming from, Byron. But at the same time, too, um, what Mr. John said, or Dr. John said with regards to um, the impact of COVID, we know that because of COVID-19, a number of people were not being as financially able as they would have been um, before with regards to either unemployment or not getting access to enough funds. So I think that going back to what Mr. Denny said, the fact that within a pandemic where people have had challenges financially, you had the eruption of a, of a volcano, putting strain on the limited resources that some persons may have personally in their home. So I think that that is something that needs to be considered. Um, I, I think going forward too, um, the warning system, warning systems are very important. And I think probably if um, Vincentians had a couple more hours, who knows, if it was early Thursday or late Wednesday to actually start a phased evacuation, probably the, um, the challenges like the little bottlenecks and, and hiccups that were experienced probably could have been ironed out. 
but this is all in hindsight. You know, it's only when things happen that you know how to plan for the future now. Early mm-hmm. warning and making sure that things are in place. I Simon, Simon, Simon I, I, oh, sorry. I wanted to say there's a quote that I heard um, years ago. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. Uh, um, that's right. Right. So, you know, right. every government of St. Vincent had given people five days notice to pack up and leave. And then the volcano didn't erupt. People will say, oh, man, I left my place and, mm. and nothing had happened. However, um, the government gave you the notice as per the science that was given to them. And, That's you right. know, I have to agree with um, Mr. Mr. Byron here when he said that, you know, the reality is, I, I understand all that you're saying, Simon, about the COVID pandemic, um, the different constraints that people may have. But he's not speaking about food. He's speaking about something as simple as clothes. Exactly. Um, Fair if, 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 if we heard that a hurricane was in the, in the Atlantic region right now getting ready to come to Barbados, St. Vincent, St. Lucia, and all these islands, um, persons would be told to prepare yourselves. You got 10 days notice, but that hurricane coming. It might pass, but it might come. And you would find that persons would start going into supermarkets, they'll go to corned beef, the tuna, Whatever they need, their supplies already. Can't prepare this. And 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 the reality is, um, you know, I, I as I said again, heavy is the head that wears the crown because this is not supporting or being against the government. This is recognizing no. institutions of the state doing their job, and persons must personal know responsibility. personal responsibility if they are to survive through this um, crisis. And talking about that, um. The Mr. Assemblyman, he spoke about Caribbean unity and um, how St. Vincent will get over this. Now, I don't know if, if you all guys remember about the Caribbean um, risk facility. Um, so, they where, yeah, they risk, yeah. Right. So, so, so basically, um, um, Chris, when I it, St. Vincent is a subscribed member. So St. Vincent will also get a payout. Um, St. Vincent, as you know, is going to get um, varying donations from CARICOM neighbors and the international mm-hmm. All right. But what I, what I want to say is this. Coming out of this crisis, there's going to, be have, there's going to have to be a serious rebuilding effort um, around the area of the volcano in St. Vincent. And, you know, we have been in the Caribbean, been through many um, pandemics, all right? Sorry, pandemics and, and natural disasters. Exactly. The challenge that I often have is that we don't learn from them. And when I say learn from them, it is one thing to learn how to um, mitigate the, the, the challenges that you face in between, in the, in the middle of the, in your response process. But look at the persons whom are often affected and see how we can economically uplift those people, right? Give those people the opportunities. Because look, in this rebuilding effort, um, it's going to be like a mini stimulus. But the challenge is that the mini stimulus will not affect those who are most affected. And that That's is it. where I often have a challenge with my Caribbean leaders. That's all I'll say. But Assemblyman, um, as you are the uh, policy-oriented person here, um, I heard uh, Dr. John spoke about um, the whole situation around late warning and then Mr. Then he spoke about the fact that as leaders, you all have to be guided by science. You all have to be guided by That's a it. lot more. What What is your take? And as you guys experienced anything similar where the science had to guide you guys or the, the persons on the ground, and then you have to make a, a, a decision which may which persons may think, you this decision too late. Uh, what is your take on that in terms of be, someone being in um, parliament? Well, well, the truth is, as, as a politician, an active one, in policy there's a dichotomy that you have to deal with. You have to look at one, how does my decision ultimately impact the politics of the thing? Don't be fooled. Politicians are always thinking about how things will impact the politics of the, of, of the thing. And on the other hand, you have to do what is right, what is best. Um, in hindsight, yes, I think an earlier uh, movement away from the area would have been helpful and would have created far less of a logistical nightmare. But yeah. you know what? Hindsight is always 2020 vision. That's course, right. But when it comes to natural disasters, I always believe we must err on the side of caution. 
meaning it's better to make an error on the side of doing something that will provide safety for all, as opposed to having to deal with the fallout effects. So it's always better when making policy, policies surrounding responses to natural disaster to go heavy on the side of being um, cautious and prepared That's right. and, and uh, perhaps being criticized for, for an overkill afterwards than to be criticized for an underkill. Notwithstanding that from where I sit all the way in Tobago, it, it looks as if uh, the, the government and the government agencies in St. Vincent and the Grenadines are doing the best they can. It looks yes. that way from, from where, where I sit. I, I, I can't be an, an ultimate judge of that, but it looks as if they are doing the, the very best that they can. And, and, and I'm saying that as, a, as an outside observer who have had um, issues in my brain, in my head, uh, with, with, with Dr. Gonzalez politically, <laughs> in my mind, right? And, and I'm saying it looks as if they have done the best that they could do. It looks that way from where I, I, I sit all the way in Tobago. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it was mentioned that, you know, we, we, there, there, there is the fact that St. Vincent will have a payout. And the truth is the cost of this, I don't know if, if all the aid and so on St. Vincent and the Grenadines will receive enough. will be enough. Because this is going to be a massive exercise in rebuilding. And we are talking about the fact that we have to rebuild public infrastructure, um, many of which might have not been at its best before to begin um, with. The, 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 the volcano, but now have to be improved beyond where they were before. We're talking about the fact that this is happening to people, some of whom may have lost jobs. Um, this, is, this is also happening to people who will now lose industries because of where we are in Trinidad and Tobago, we do import quite a bit of ground provisions from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Um, quite a bit comes through the CARICOM jet in, in Port of Spain, and we consume that here in Tobago. And, and, and I mean, that's, that, that kind of farming a, ha happens because of the fact that St. Vincent has volcanic rock type. The, the geology allows for deep, rich, fertile soil. This is yeah, just the problem cool. of that. So you, you're looking at a fallout in an industry that is important. And maybe if I am facetious, we, we could look at the, the what, what do you call it, the, the, the non-registered um, side of the industry. And in <laughs> fact, um, even with the decriminalization of marijuana around the region, um, even that uh, industry as illegitimate as it might be, Hard hit. definitely wow. we have followed that too. And whether we, we will like to discuss it or not, there are many people who have had income because income streams because of, of, of that. So, it's so there's, there's that whole impact. But beyond that, though, I want us to not forget that there is a, 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 a social and psychological impact that has to be treated. People who experience trauma, how do we repair people who have experienced such trauma, people who have near death experiences, people who have invested the entire life savings into home, into cars, into farms, farm animals, will now have to start from scratch. How do you treat that psychological impact? And let people realize that it's not the end of the world. You will send it You know, I, I don't know how we will get that aspect out as well. That has to be treated as a matter of urgency. And, and, and that has to be that treatment that now while they are even in uh, the shelters, because in, in, in those shelters, the experiences in those shelters will also determine the kind of um, repair psychologically that will have to happen post the volcano. Um, I, you, want to just, I, um, I wanted to make a point, uh, John. I wanted to say um, that uh, first, good afternoon, good evening to everybody. Thanks for tuning in. I just wanted to touch on a couple of points, um, in particular, where Assemblyman Farley would address that the 
St. Vincent government needs to pay for the damage done by the volcano. Um, we have had discussions, particularly um, at the level of the United Nations, speaking about sustainable development and how the planning of, of policy um, directly correlates to that. We are in a natural disaster region. So if it is not a volcano, it is a hurricane, possible earthquakes, possible uh, flooding and tsunamis. And we were looking at clauses to build in our uh, financial and economic instruments to be able to um, diversify away the risks that are associated with natural disasters. So under Barbados' IMF program, we would have instituted a clause which allows us to suspend debt payments, uh, which are owed to some of the multilaterals in the event of uh, emergency such as this. So, so going forward, um, Caribbean governments, in particular, are the ones that are close by to Barbados, St. Vincent and, and Trinidad. If St. Vincent, Vincent sneezes, it will happen, Barbados is effective. So Barbados and Tobago and Trinidad and these countries now have to plan going forward and not plan at the level of CARICOM only, but to plan at the level of nationally, whereas we um, get or, or practice more ground-oriented um, politics and, and, and policies where, um, for instance, the level of, um, let's just use our landmass in St. Lucie and Barbados, we, where we were most affected um, by the ash. Um, we, at the level of our government, we need to be able to pay for the damage that was done there and in a way as well. St. Vincent, again, has the problem of paying for the damage as well, but we, as countries who don't have very large budgets, tend to rely on the international community for support. So how now do we go forward planning policies at the, le at the national level individually that be able to, to benefit countries, um, and again, using the example of the suspension and the debt payments, to be able to fund our way out of natural disasters when they occur? Um, you know, excellent points, you know, raised there, and I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for them. You asked the question, you know, how do countries raise funds? You know, here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, our, our government um, over the last uh, four to five years, subject to correction, um, has set up a fund, as a disaster fund in place. Uh, based on your telecommunication, there's a surcharge there, and a 2% charge goes towards that particular fund in the event, um, you know, that there, there are natural disasters. And this certainly has, you know, come to benefit us at this point in time. Um, some $30 million immediately being made available to deal with the whole matter of assisting evacuees and quite naturally followed from the last of explosion. Uh, added good. to that, I mean, there's a COVID-19 pandemic. I, I spoke about the fact that um, the hurricane season is just around. Um, but here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, um, just today, as a matter of fact, the, the government made an announcement um, that relief supplies coming into the island, um, going specifically to, to Nemo and the Red Cross and, 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 and some specified agencies, um, that they're, they're, it will not attract any, any taxes. Um, water, which I spoke about, a high-valued item at this point in time. Um, the government have, is now waiving all taxes VAT on, on, on water coming into St. Vincent and the Grenadines, um, assisting quite naturally the people, but at the same time, reducing the revenue potential of a government who is now faced um, with the task of you know, raising the, the necessary funds um, to get this country back in place. I, I just got some, 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 some footage out of Sandy Bay. That's in the red zone on the main road. Pyroclastic flow has destroyed you know, that entire road. And that's just one image. You know? We are now seeing the, those, the, the devastation you know, coming in and, and there's a lot of work to be done. Mr. Danny, I know that when you guys, I know that uh, I've been reading about your country as it relates to the, the prime minister made statement in the paper, in the papers um, where, you know, the country had been crippled in terms of not knowing if they could have paid their bills, um, you know, $30 million in, in bills within the next two months. Um, judging that you have that uh, if problem where you, you may not be able to pay your bills, you have COVID where, you know, you, you're going to probably have a, you probably have a high unemployment rate already. 
um, now you have the devastation of the Lucifer uh, volcano. I mean, that's a heavy burden to, to carry. It's like if the, the prime minister has to decide where to really put focus, um, which is a hard task. You know, you know you're know, you dealing with some, I mean, COVID and the volcano probably could combine because those that are in the shelter staff to uh, um, abide by every rule and every law and every protocol as it relates to the um, COVID-19. I'm also hearing talks of where persons are, are saying that, you know, if they're going, where talks from the government, that person has to be vaccinated. I know for our country, we made that, um, that persons will be vaccinated, have to be vaccinated. You're also having a person from your end that has to be vaccinated if they want to move. I, I think that's going to obviously create some sort of kickback because where it wasn't mandatory before, it may be mandatory now. Um, for you and Dr. J uh, John, um, and also for um, Byron, I'll, I'll let um, Dr. John go first. What is the thoughts are on, what is the talk on the ground as it relates to vaccination, how the government has been handling this uh, triple threat? How is it to you? And then I'll go to call, uh, call Drip before I go back to um, Mr. Denny. Go ahead, Dr. John. I want to start by saying this, right? Um, I think we need to remember here very clearly that disaster management in itself is a science. It is not how we feel about it or how we think about it. There is a process that we have to go through, right? And, you know, when, when we talk about this whole vaccination issue, this has, I, I, my colleague talked about um, looking at how would this affect people psychologically and so on. The, the reaction on the ground, not only on the ground, but countries around the world, people have been reaching out to me. I'm, I'm part of the Island Ambassador Program and we have about 365 countries. And these people are literally calling me and asking me, wait, Dr. John, is your government crazy? What are they doing? You don't want to implement such a measure like that in a, a, a eruption of a volcano, right? So while we're saying that we got these things happening, we have to, in disaster management, disaster management is put there to minimize the impact, right? And that is where I am looking at, right? My concern, because, and I'm speaking from experience, is that I have been in enough disasters in St. Vincent to say that, I still think that we need to do more in terms of getting these, especially from the community level, right? Remember that the community is the first always to respond in the disasters. Then the national mechanism kicks in after, right? So when we are looking at these things, we talk about what oh, people should know better to be prepared on something. What are they going to be prepared with what, right? Okay, suppose that the people had clothes. You can't take, if you're talking about a shelter, there is a specific regulation or protocol that is supposed to be in place for you to even designate any building as a shelter for national disaster. So if, if you're going to say, or oh, we got 10 shelters and these are the 10, these buildings should be prepared for national, to, to handle the national disaster. Because you remember, you are moving 17,000 people into these buildings suddenly. So there are going to be issues. And when you go into a shelter, you talk about clothes. Going into a shelter is not the same thing as being in your house and having clothes, right? I have slept in EOCs already on cots and so on, and it is not easy to do, right? So when you're gonna, we're gonna look at it from, oh, the people should this and the people should that, and forget the science of disaster management. This is why we keep making these mistakes. And I am not here to say, oh, well, we could have changed how it erupt. But what I am seeing already is that we need to immediately change, put preventative management things in place so that even when these things happen, the impact is less. You, you, you have teachers right now pulling up their own pockets to buy food for people at the shelter. All of these things are occurring, whether we like it or not. They are happening. Right now, I am here at a distribution center where I'm speaking to you from. And you got people here right now trying to put stuff together to get out there tomorrow morning to get to these people. Because as much as the national system is in place, we got to understand that that is take a lot of time to get down to the people who are actually being impacted. And we keep missing this part all the time when it comes to disaster management. 
I, I, I can, I, I was one of the persons who for three months, I was in the field after I, I arrived in St. Vincent the immediate morning after the December 2013 flood. And I stayed with that process for three months on the ground as a volunteer, helping people in, in distress. Uh, coming out of that, when we did the postmortem, I was selected as part of a committee to sit down and review the National em Emergency Plan for St. Vincent and, and the Grenadines. And we did that. So when I sit now and I see what is happening and I know that the parts of this plan and what is supposed to kick in and when it is supposed to kick in is not happening, right? It pains me. And I know what, it's not about how I feel about it, but the impact that the people on the ground are going to get as a result of us not following the science, right? And, and, and this is where I am coming from this evening to talk to you from, that we need to get this thing right. The other issue I want to mention is like, what you're getting here now is like this thing, like a, a fight. So as a community organization, there's a lot of barricades to us even doing things right now. I saw a notice put up there where it's like, the only items would have been allowed on the, the, the Coast Guard ship was that from Nemo and so on. And all those items, we, we, even if people wanted to send to organizations who were on the ground and could do things faster, they had to go through the national system. So if we're gonna be really looking at how we can fix these things, we gotta look at making sure as Prime Minister Martin said yesterday, cooperation and partnership is happening, right? And these are my concerns, not about how I feel, but when these things are not happening, how it is going to impact the people at the actual shelter. And that is why what we are keep missing. And I saw this at the Union Island fire, right? I was there. I handled all three casualties, and as a re this is why it is, it is concerning me so much that I keep seeing a repeat of this same type of negligence and approach to disaster management in this country. It pains me, right? I would like to, uh, people like always to... want to come and paint a pretty picture about how it should look on the theory book instead of what is actually happening on the ground. And I... I am here as one who has been on the ground and speaking from the ground, right? And I am saying that there are a lot of things that could have been done better and should have been done better to eliminate some of the suffering that the people are facing now. I am not talking about how we can correct it because we are always ready to correct it after it finish. But what we need to also remember, what can we do before? And it can't be on the people alone. You're asking poor people to do what not even Nemo could do, right? Nemo is a, was I, not ready either. The Prime right, Minister I, just I, announced. No, no, hold I, I don't know if I can come the in. The Prime Minister home. just announced to this country that he could not even pay civil servants for three months. That's and not you're, correct. You're going to sit here and say, "Oh, hey, people should be ready." That, that is incorrect, Mr. John. That's incorrect. That is That's incorrect. incorrect. Uh, Mr. De Denny, you want to reply? And yeah. then let me hear Caldre. Yeah, could I? Could I come in here? Go ahead. Um, go ahead. You know, <laughs> the backdrop of all of this. We are in the midst of an explosive eruption of a volcano. And it is happening during a COVID-19 pandemic, a global pandemic, where not just the people St. Vincent and the Grenadines have been affected, but persons globally. But coming home here to St. Vincent and the Grenadines, persons have lost their income, their jobs, you know, you name it, it has happened. But one of the things that I mentioned initially, right, is the fact that there has been an outpouring from the people of this country. Dr. John mentioned the teachers, but they've been entertainers. They've been the average Joe, so to speak. Um, what is a, what is a, a, pong, of, a pong of um flour, rice, two bottles of water, you know, whatever they can put together, they're doing so out of sheer humanity to reach out to those who have been affected. Of course, the, the, the framework is there by the authorities led by Nemo, um, you know, to, to, to do what is necessary to, to keep things going. But I appreciate the fact, and this must be appreciated, that there are persons here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines who's just doing a tremendous job. Now, the whole matter of the $30 million, the backdrop of this is that the AstraZeneca vaccine is available here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Uh, we got 40,000 
um, from the government of India. Recently, we got another 24,000. Of that amount, we made 5,000 available to St. Lucia, 5,000 available to Grenada. But what has been happening is that the vaccination process here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines got off to a big high, but it's, 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 it has slowed tremendously. All right? Now, what is the reason behind, behind vaccination? Is for us to certainly get to what is called herd immunity, population immunity. And with population in immunity, it gives us that opportunity to get back to normal, get the jobs going again, get people working again. The Prime Minister has spoken about jabs and jobs. You get the vaccination, you create the potential of, 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 of jobs, right? Now, with the slowing, the Prime Minister simply said, and which is a fact, that it has been a whole year now. The revenue of the government has been under threat. And if it is that, you know, um, persons want to delay the process for one reason or the, or the other, we could find ourselves in a situation where with reduced economic activity, the government may, he didn't say it was going to happen, may for the first time find itself in a, in a position where not being able to pay the $30 million um, monthly salaries bill. That's just the crux of it, you know? But here we now have the volcano eruption. Again, I have to stress in the whole matter of the pandemic, we just do not know what is going to happen down the road and the support systems regionally, globally, for Little St. Vincent and the Grenadines is so much needed at this point in time. Um, I spoke about the disaster relief fund, um, but that is gonna be soaked up, you know, in a whisker, for want of a better terminology. And I think- I, want, I wanted time, to make a point, honestly. Can I just, can I finish? Can um, I just finish? Can I just finish? finish? Let me finish, so I, 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 I was just, I was just simply summing up and saying, you know, based on, you know, this whole backdrop, this is where we, we, we need, that assistance regionally, globally, whatever um, can be made to available to St. Vincent and the Grandines, as I said early on, will be much needed, will be much appreciated. I don't think it's a time for us to, um, you know, start painting our windows black and that kind of stuff, metaphoric language um, be, I'm using there. This is a time for us to be positive. Let me get a call right first, Kimar, then let me come right back to you if I can. Yes, um, in conjunction with the, um, the COVID, vaccine if the other countries who are willing and i do not want people to get me wrong if there are countries who are willing to say i want to take 500 positive from st vincent 600 positive 300 positive but unless they have been vaccinated because there is a pandemic within not only st vincent and the grenadines alone but the region and the world at large and if they're sending for there to take us they have to be vaccinated or they have to be tested. The sh look at three cruise ships came into St. Vincent to assist with evacuation, right? Mm -hmm. Are they prepared to go on the ships? Question. Why are they not prepared to go on the ship? It's because they don't want to be vaccinated. And I, this is my personal um, opinion. Social media is good and it is bad. And they spread a lot of propaganda. If you if you say they spread the truth, and the lie will always spread as a wildfire, and the truth can never come back to it. So, when we look at it in Saint Vincent and Grenadines, it's not only God forbid, right? And I was listening to the CMO this morning with the Prime Minister on, on Radio Seven or Five. They they have new cases of um, coronavirus. Within the shelters, you're gonna blame who you're going who you're going to blame for that. Mm. We have to we have to look within our mind's eyes and say and stop taking things for granted. There are countries who are willing to assist us, not only financially, but to help us in evacuating people. Get evacuees there. But what are they saying? You cannot come unless you are vaccinated. Mm -hmm. who, are you, who are you going to blame for that? We have to think rationally. And uh, there's a lot of, as Dennis rightfully said, st stop painting picture, stop painting the walls. 
Look inside the picture. Look inside the mirror. Who are you seeing? I, as a frontline worker, I am an immigration officer. I am a frontline worker. Other countries are saying for the things to get better, for people to come. They want places also to come. You have to get the necessary things in place. We have to think rationally. We have to think things differently. And the media sometimes spread a lot of untruth. And we have, we as, and sometimes I want to say something, if they're, they're, you look at people who say they're educated, sometimes we, we have to think twice. You know, you know, by it, it is really, uh, it Kimar is really uh, ridiculous. Uh, Jeremy, oh, sorry, let me hear Kimar, and then you can come, and then let me get um, assemblyman uh, take on the vaccine, taking of vaccines, and then we can go for it. Go ahead, Kimar. Okay. Yes. Um, I at this point, because I don't really want to get into, um, because the fact is we have the volcano erupted, and we have to deal with it at this point. And when I say we mean the entire Caribbean, not just St. Vincent. So Barbados and St. Lucia have put their shoulders to the plow and taken some of the residents from St. Vincent onto their shoulders. And we had the cruise ships coming to St. Vincent to be able to transport persons across the Caribbean. Um, that speaks to a home affairs issue that Barbados has to be able to host the Sanctions also the solutions mm -hmm. need to be able to host the bank sanctions. Um, for persons who may have family on the island, it may be a bit easier for them to come or go to a strange land. And persons who may not have people in other territories, it may be a difficult transition to be able to pack up everything you have or may not have, even if it's down to your last shirt and slippers, to be able to go to another country to, to be dependent on them to to feed you. Now, how now do we manage a situation like that where persons who may not have passports, uh, persons who may not have the appropriate uh, documentations and the like to be able to cure this problem uh, going forward? So I, I definitely want to, because I mean, this speaks to, to, to other issues. I, I would have liked to see a situation where um, the Caribbean had their own boats to be able to tr um, transport themselves uh, over to the Vincentian Islands and to be able to transport some people out as opposed to waiting on Royal Caribbean. Our airport is closed, so we, we could not do any and the port to air transport. Yes, um, but this, this crisis and you know, you don't wish for people to go through crises or pain, but in every crisis, there is opportunity. And I believe coming out of this, this puts the Caribbean, uh, particularly these neighboring countries, in a position where we are forced to work together to be able to help each other. So we need to help each other in the areas of health. We need to be able to help each other in the areas of agriculture. Uh, we we, we have, have to be able to help each other in terms of um, transportation and hospitality. Fatality. So I think the crisis produced uh, put far as a good opportunity for us as Caribbean brothers and sisters to be able to work together as a region and come forward as a solid block coming out to this volcano. Uh, yeah, that, I, I think one of the, the challenges before I add uh, Semberman on the vaccine, uh, one of the challenges is that um, a lot of things are happening, especially in this 2020, uh, from 2019 to 2020, um, that we none of us ever thought that we would ever go through in our lifetime as it relates to no seeing well for me uh being around a pandemic and now being around a volcanic eruption and i think a lot of things um definitely need to be looked at as the way how we go forward and i think that governments need to take the criticism that they're getting from the people because well dr john well dr john say it, it, it is real for some people um, but at the end of the day, you're in a pandemic, which at some time, you, you're, it, no matter if you're the government in power or not, sometimes you, you and I heard our prime minister said it many times, that your, your hands are bounded because you really don't know. And you're guided, you have to be guided by the science, you have to be guided by That's the it. moment. And these deep decision makers, 
and I, I could agree with Denny. I, I from what I hear you say, everything is going good. Things are looking up, but we understand from Dr. John that there may be things that are not happening because he's on the ground, and which is fine because in Barbados there are challenges as it relates to what people think about the pandemic and how people see it. Dr. John is not the only person on the ground. So and Dr. John, not correct. So there's so much <laughs> other. Um, as it relates to the, the vaccine, which is an important factor. Now, no, although Barbados stands ready to help and other people, other countries rather stand ready to help, they must also, because of the pandemic, protect their protect. own. That's and it. if it was not for a pandemic, you could have said, look, pack up on the boat and come quick. Nobody yeah. would be worried about a vaccination program. But where you are trying to get your country to be 100% vaccinated, it would be incumbent upon the government to be able to bring people in who may, quote unquote, have COVID, be around us, and start back slowing down our economy, which is already mm. so affected. And so any True. wise government will have to look at making sure people are vaccinated, are willing to take the vaccine, rather, before letting them into their country. Because you might be, yes, all hearty to let your sister, your brother, your aunt in, but that may be the carrier. And then you go and give it to your workmate and your other person who don't care about your family. <laughs> be honest, that they may not care about your family. So you all they want question. to be vaccinated and we looked at. So sensible governments will have to facilitate that need first to protect the larger population, which is the Barbadian mm -hmm. population, the, Tibet, the St. Lucia, or whoever, Grenada, whoever is willing to take in. Uh, Jermaine, let me get you assemblyman just on the vaccine and then bring you in. After. Okay, great. Uh, Simon, your take on the vaccine and what you think about that, and even what the challenge if you see any years. Well, firstly, let, let, let me say to you, gentlemen from St. Vincent and the Grenadines, don't beat up on yourself too hard. I mean, I know during a crisis like this, there is the sorry, Assemblyman. If I could correct, uh, just for those that are viewing, um, Dr. John does drop off at time to time because of the um, internet, so he will be back on. Go ahead, there, someone. Sure. So I was just, in, I was just saying, don't beat up on yourself too much. The truth is, if I, I was in uh, Dr. Gonzalez's show, I'm, I might have done more than just cry. I might have been <laughs> bawling right now. Um, <laughs> I can't imagine how he is managing all of this simultaneously. This is a situation of a crisis upon a crisis upon a crisis. And if not managed carefully, will lead to several future crises or deepening some crises. And we don't want that to happen. I True. have been looking at the debates going on in St. Vincent and the Grenadines about the, the vaccination and whether they should have it or not. And um, the instruction that teachers who show up to school without it will be asked to leave. And either you're vaccinated or you you take a test, have the test done. Um, and, and the truth is, we need to get to the place of, of getting that herd or, uh, or population immunity as quickly as possible. I would say for you guys in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, you are more fortunate than we are in Tobago with regards to uh, the, the, the number of vaccines you have available. At the moment for us in Tobago with a population of around 60,000, we just got 3,000 vaccines. So we are slow. We are behind uh, many in the region in terms of the number of vaccines available to us. And, and so if you have 3,000 vaccines, a population of around 60,000 people, then it means that your first preference will have to be those who are over the age of 60, those with non-communicable diseases. Those on the front line. Pre-existing. Front family, line. Those on the front line. And if we just take one of that demographic, those over 60, age 60 in Tobago, based on our last census, that's about 8,000 of our population. So we don't, we don't even have half the number of vaccines to meet those over 60 uh, who, who are supposed to be the most vulnerable. So kudos to you guys in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. You are ahead of us in terms of your vaccination program, as you should be. And thankfully so, looking at this crisis now, and, and it was mentioned that, that cases are popping up in the shelters, that was my biggest fear, even before the, the volcano blew out. My biggest fear looking on from the outside was if 
this COVID-19 thing isn't managed properly, you will have a serious crisis post the volcano. Mm -hmm. Lives may not be lost by the volcano, but COVID-19 can take quite a number of lives. Um, and, and so that is a, a, a crisis that can be deepened and they don't want that, cri that to be deepened, especially when money is short. Let us be honest, across the Caribbean region, um, a common feature of the economics of the Caribbean is high debt and low growth. That's, that's the reality that's of the Caribbean. That's, that's the it's problem. It's a mm -hmm. Caribbean wide problem. And given that the Caribbean region is the most tourism dependent region in the world, we, tourism makes up more of our GDP as a region Seven. than any other region in the entire world. And, and, and COVID that restricted global travel would have already decimated our regional economy. This on top of it is, is going to worsen our matters. One of the things that I would love to find out is what is socioeconomic conditions of the red zone prior to the volcano? Because I, I'm, I'm not familiar with the red zone area and what the socioeconomic conditions of that district mm -hmm. were. That also would have uh, created some problems in terms of the response to um, the, the, in terms of preparedness. Because the reality is, if we're dealing with people for example, do not have their own transportation and have to rely on some public transportation to get out of the red zone, that will, will naturally restrict how much Slow down, they yeah. from their homes to other places. As we, if a, a family that has its own car or, or pickup could pile in a lot of stuff and, and talk that out quite easily. But I don't know what the socioeconomic conditions of that region was before. Um, and, and that too, is, is something that we have to look at. But don't beat yourselves up too much. As I've said, as someone who has, in my mind, criticized Dr. Gonzalez before, I believe that um, he's, he's doing a pretty good job in terms of managing of this, this disaster. And I think we have to be fair to him um, at this time because you're managing a natural disaster like a volcano that is difficult to predict, much more difficult to predict than a, a, a hurricane, for example. That's right. Why there is the COVID um, pandemic. I don't know that there's anything else he could have done differently or that Nemo could have done differently that, that, that would have helped. Now that you're in the crisis, hindsight is 2020 vision. You look back, you see that there are some things that you, you, you would have done differently um, if you were to relive the experience, but it's already done. At this right. point, the question is, how do we move on? Okay. And how do we move on in a way that will allow for uh, as, as, as easy a, a, a transition back into normalcy as possible? And then uh, um, based on what Denny spoke about, the, the, the flows that are happening now, um, that's even more frightening to me now because I, um, that, that, I mean, the ash is one thing, but when you start talking about those flows happening, you're talking about a different kind of, of destruction happening now because the, the, the magma flows will burn and eat up everything in its path. The, the ash fall, yes, it will be dense, it will destroy some crops and so on, but crops will grow out of it eventually. The, 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 the magma flow is, is, is a whole different story. And, sure. and please, now is not the time to beat up on each other. Now is really the time to, to pull together. And, and I come from a space where the politics is very divisive. Um, trust me. And we cannot constitute our house because we are at a deadlock. Both parties got six votes each, six seats each mm -hmm. in, in, in this election. So, and we can't come together to, to work it out. We at each other's throat still. So I understand how divisive politics <laughs> But mm -hmm. now that is a, a disaster. Now is the time that we just have to put, put it aside. aside. All right. Jeremy, you want our, our feelings for each other and just find a way to work together. And I love that example you gave, uh, Mr. Denny, about what you observed in one of those shelters. Dishes. Uh, where the, 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 the winner of the election and the person who was defeated 
They were there working together in the same shelter, trying to get things done. Caribbean societies are small island societies, you know. I, I, I wish we did not have Westminster politics that allows for so much animosity and aggressiveness in terms of how the politics works. Mm. But we are small island societies. We are small by native population and geography. And all are we related one way or the other when you, when you, when you look at it. Um, mm. You place your family tree, somebody related to somebody. Um, everybody knows, I'm sure I know people in St. Vincent and the Grenadines that you guys know. And, Where are you from there? The smallest of the <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure the the names of some people I studied with in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And I'm certain you guys know them. We'll know one right. of them. That's, that's a yeah. free, a small island society. And that's so that's, quick, be, that's quick. To hunch down and you know, work a little right, more yeah. closely because we don't want to deepen the crisis post these crises that we, we are experiencing now. But press ahead. You are more mm -hmm. fortunate than us when it comes to your vaccination program. I could Thank tell you. you. Uh, so press ahead. If, yeah, I can right. just, if I can just slip in here, please. Um, Go ahead. Assemblyman, I, I just want to give you that virtual handshake. Um, <laughs> I, can, I can say to you that um, I, I love the PNM, but based on what you said here this evening, um, should, I come, should, I, should I come to the bagel? Um, based on what you said and your mindset, um, you might very well, you know, um, you know win me over. <laughs> yes, of yeah, go ahead, Jeremy. You had a comment? But yes. Um, okay. Sorry. So, I sorry. Hold on, Jeremy. You want to respond for already? No, no, I, was, I was just. I was just giving a quick quip to say that you should know that in Tobago, my party is an indigenous Tobago party. Uh, <laughs> based on numbers, based on numbers, uh, we are the third largest party in the entire country. Based on, yeah. on on numbers of votes we got in the last general election. Correct. Uh, our arch enemies in Tobago is is the PNM. But I will give you a, the warmest welcome. Even if, although you love the PNM, I'll give you the warmest welcome when you come to Vegas. Because at the end of the day, I, I am I am adamant that small island societies must not get the pol allow the politics to get to them to the place I where they are uh -huh. unable to live with each other. You look at uh -huh. larger first world countries, developed countries as divisive as their politics can be, where they have a, a trillion dollar budgets to fight over. People do find ways to work across the aisle to get things done. And, mm -hmm. and crisis is just one of those things where we have no choice, I believe, but to get things done together. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Uh, Go ahead, Jeremy. Um, Mr. Assemblyman, I just want to make a point. That's not enough. And Go ahead, Jeremy. The best Sorry. Right. Um, right. Okay. So I was making it, I want to make a point about um, the, the, the COVID, the administration of the COVID vaccine. Um, so if you look across the Caribbean and if you look at the, specifically in St. Vincent, you said that there is not much of an uptake right now. But if you look at the Barbados example, the reason why we are able to add, why the vaccination program has gone so well in Barbados is because one, it has been led from the top by our prime That's minister, it. all right? And the messaging around the vaccinations, look, all of the things that the people in St. Vincent are hearing and the people in Trinidad are hearing, the people in Barbados are also hearing. But the difference is that we have a leader and a government in Barbados, which is coming to the people and say, look, these are the facts. These are the geopolitical warfares. These are the conspiracy theorists. These right. are, 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 are the anti-vaxxers. So basically, you know up front, the reality is you have to make a decision based on the facts. Now, I'm going to say something, two things I'm going to make that are going to make me very unpopular right now. You're already unpopular, Jeremy. <laughs> well, I, I, I can get <laughs> more unpopular now. Um, Mr. Denny, um, if the persons who are saying that they do not want to take the vaccine, if it is mandatory to go to another country, were told that they were going to be evacuated to either England or America, but they had to take a vaccine, I guarantee you there would be long lines to get our vaccine. Right? right? But it is Back. because that they go going to come to another Caribbean country that they discriminate him. Number one. Number two, Assemblyman, um, I like you. I think you, you're very progressive. But if I were in Trinidad right now, um, or like Mr. Denny, I probably would have voted for the UNC. I'm just saying. <laughs> That's where we differ. 
<laughs> oh dear! Look at the assembly of this. I tell you, you get, he already on But you're making it divisive, bro. You're making it divisive. No, no statements. Now, no, to the first one, I agree with you. In the Caribbean, there is a false sense of self-importance across the region that has True. been stymied regionalism and and and, and the, the movement to what working together. Yeah. I really hope that my generation, our generation. Can, can get to where our parents and grandparents and great grandparents refused to go. And, and, and is that, that sense of insularity has to stop. And it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate we're still living in a society where people feel more affected by, by some prince that died than, than they feel affected by, by their own realities. And you're right, people yeah. would have lined up in droves to take the vaccine if they were going to go to the Queen's country or they were going to go to the United States. We have to well be said. more disciplined than that. We have to be more disciplined than that. We just yeah. have to. They, run, uh, oh, sorry, go, you want, sorry, go ahead, uh, Assemblyman. So, and, 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 the, and the final thing is, I mean, I, I am as afraid of the UNC as I am of, of the PNM. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being a third party, right? Yeah. I, and it's rare, it's a rarity that a third party makes it anywhere in the True. country. But I that's right. Being a third party and being a small indigenous party in a corner that, that are fighting for, for, for the rights of very small villages and enclaves as opposed to being part of the mess that we see happening um, coming from Trinidad with the, 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 the tribal politics, the race defined politics. I was part of, of, of that. Sure. Well, but um, by, um, by Ron, you, do you, you want to bring in anything here? Because I know you've been listening a while. You're on mute. On mute. I'm, I'm okay. Okay. Yeah, well, I, I wanted to say something. Go ahead, Simon. Yeah. Um, for me, with regards to the, the whole volcanic eruption now, we spoke a lot about the way forward. And a lot of suggestions and ideas came, came about with regards to building resilient um, countries or building resilient societies. And I know that building resilience against volcanic eruption is a lot different than trying to build resilience with um, hurricanes. Because I think that over the years, we would have been able to improve on the housing stock throughout the Caribbean with regards to hurricanes. We know how to handle hurricanes. We put a lot more emphasis in um, structural integrity, um, strengthening the roof and so on and pinning them down. But I think that with um, volcanoes, um, I think with regards to the zone and where people build outside, like those persons in the red zone, I think that with regards to moving forward, it will be very important or very interesting to see how people will be relocated and the type of housing um, that will be in that area or if people will be um, asked to move further away um, from the, the volcano. The, the other thing too is going back to some of the immediate needs. I think that being on a program as this right now, we have the opportunity to ventilate to, um, to our regional counterparts, what are the needs? You, you said, um, Mr. Denny, that the, the real high value commodity right now is water, bottled water. Um, water in any form is, is a high value commodity. So I, I think that coming out of this, I'm hoping that we will be able to have some kind of structure or impress on our counterparts on giving donations whether physically or monetarily, to assist the effort um, in St. Vincent. Yeah, I can, uh, yeah, sorry. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Assemblyman. Well, and then keep on. No, quick question. Um, what is, is, is what you said? Um, perhaps you give us a list of other things that might... Yes, I, I, I think he's asking about water. I, you're, we're losing your Assemblyman. Sorry, you were saying that water is going Absolutely. The question though is, is water and other are water and other supplies readily available for purchase? Because I know sometimes when you have these disasters, the export is for sure. Um, so is it is it that when you are sent to the borders, buy water? Um, is it better to send the, the, the bottles of water? What will be preferred? And if there are other things that you think um, are absolutely necessary, whether it be articles of clothing, 
um, food stuff, tin foods, Patricia, let us know via this medium because um, we have our, our own respective, we have our respective drives going on. And, I, and people have been asking me what exactly um, they need. So if you give me the list of the most important needs, water and others, then it will help in being able to push some, pushing some resources your way. But oh, about whether or not the import export flow is interrupted or whether that's going on as normal, which would mean stuff will be able to come in and people can purchase stuff and so on. Uh, uh, Conrad, you want to say, and then let me get uh, uh, Mr. Dennis. Yes, I want to chime in here, please, because um, I you was um, coming back in, to you. I was in contact with um, some shelters in um, my zone as in East St. George because we have a large amount of um, shelters in East St. George. And what day I get in contact with them and find out what, um, what are the needs upright. They have like water, face masks, pampas for babies, wipes, clothing in all sizes, bath soap, toothpaste, sanitary napkins, tissue papers. Well, then you mentioned the water already, towel sheets, food supplies, disinfectants, and the, the cooking, like food stuff and so, which will, which will, when they're going to the supermarket, you know what people cook with and so forth, detergents, sanitizers, and soap and so forth. Right. Thank you. Um, Danny, before you come in, um, and add to it, if you can, Danny, when you come in, we are hearing about all of this collection, and, and you spoke about some people, obviously, if you're in the export, import business, is easy for you. But for um, I know some countries have been mobilizing and sending down stuff like Barbados. We send down stuff on the ships. Are there other channels, especially people are here on the on the comments are asking? They're from New York, um, they're from Grenada and other countries that want to be able to give as well. With probably that they may not be able to go through the mainstream um, channels like the boats and what's not. Is there other channels too that we can give? Are there organizations there? that we can give to as well to be able to support other regions and to, you know, fair distribution. Um, is there other ways that you, uh, other means and ways, um, Denny? Well, first of all, let me just say that um, Byron's list is a pretty extensive one, but um, I, I, I strongly suggest the National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, mm -hmm. um, who is ultimately responsible for the whole management of this disaster, right. um, that, you know, whatever matters with regards to relief items be channeled through them. Right. Um, I can provide a contact at this point in time. It's uh, 1784 uh, 456 2975. All right, 1784 56 2975. That's sorry, give me that. Give me back the number again 1784 456 2975. Okay, just put it on the chat for those who. Are interested in giving, so you can. That's the number there. If you're interested in giving, and, and I, strong, I, strong, I strongly advise that persons go through Nemo. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, um, there's the SVG Red Cross. Um, there's the Lions Club. Um, mm -hmm. Also, you you can channel you know whatever donations that you have you know through these 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 other entities. Mm -hmm. Right, because I think it's going to be hard for. Obviously, I know people may want to send to people personally. But obviously, when a country is going through a, a disaster such as this, um, the channels it may not be able to be cleared fast enough. They may not get there to clear. Uh, whether, and these other organizations, such as NEMO, and uh, both me and Simon are a part of the National Emergency Department for Barbados. And we know that if there's such, mm -hmm. we, you know, you go through certain channels uh, because the channels allow for things to be moving faster. Um, and you may not. Because if somebody living in the red zone got to get to the green zone for food stuff, that's a process that may take long and that person may not receive. So but the best thing to do, if you can, is go through the, the regular channels, right, the legit, channels. The legit yep. channels, and that way too, uh, you know that it's actually probably more going to reach everybody and anybody that is in de their need. And so those are the things that you got to focus on. But gentlemen, we've been discussing for... But, but, uh, but finally, just, be, just, just, yeah. just to remind you that I mentioned earlier on that um, there is no some exemption um, relative to oh, VAT okay. 
on items mm -hmm. being sent to these selected organizations, NEMO, mm -hmm. the Red Cross, uh, the Lions Club, um, mm -hmm. as of today. Um, right. There, there's no longer tax. The whole mm -hmm. matter of water, there's an exemption also on, on the duty for, for, for importation of water. Mm -hmm. um, for persons who may have a, a friend, family, if they wish mm -hmm. to send water, um, they can do so directly to the person. That will, that will not attract any duty. But, mm. you know, if you're doing so in bulk, um, especially other items apart from water, um, again, the advice is to go through, you know, the, those, those groupings, name one others. Right. And so I know those, for those who are listening, those persons thought, how long would it take to get to them? That is a question that no one on here will be able to answer. It is a pandemic. It is a volcanic uh, thing. Obviously, they have to have uh, clear rules to drive. I mean, in Barbados, and we've been having it difficulty um, in terms of how we move out. I can't hear you, Samba, man. Yeah, so for those from the islands, mm. uh, stuff getting to St. Vincent won't be that long. Believe mm. it or not, uh, yeah. travel between the islands um, isn't that lengthy. Yeah, so, true. If you would go through your, and I have a, quite a number of folks from Tobago listening, so I should perhaps take the opportunity to say to them that you can give your donations through TIMA. TIMA is our version of, of NEMO. Mm -hmm. TIMA stands for Tobago Emergency Management Authority. So you can give it through TIMA. We also have the, the Tobago mission of SDA. So the SDA community is also helping to pool. Yes. Mm -hmm. Seven days Adventist community. Seven days. At, at drug relief and, and so forth. And um, people can uh, contact folks like uh, uh, Diamond, Diamond Andrews or Damian Edwards. Um, even uh, folks like George Leacock at Radio Tamarin. They are doing some collections and they're working all through TIMA. Um, to push this stuff through. And once it's going through team, it means that it will go through um, Nemo across in St. Vincent and the Grenadines because we will go through only those official um, channels. For those living in the diaspora, and we have quite a number of Caribbean people living in the tri-state area in the US, in Canada, and, and the UK, and Europe, and so on. For those living abroad, um, it might be easier for you to send monetary contributions and that's why you should take the, the Nemo number mm -hmm. and, and reach out to Nemo because then they will be able to supply you with things like a bank account number through which you mm -hmm. can wire transfer. And a something. legit bank account information. And, and legit that's right. Yeah. And, and I'm saying I'm saying to all of you looking at time, you have to give. You absolutely have to give and give mm -hmm. as much as you can. Um, no one is requiring that you give more. You can't give more than you have. You got, yeah. But give whatever you have. The list of items that were given were pretty exhaustive. And, and I think that's a good list to work with. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Kima, what you can do is on this particular channel, post the show, you can post the actual list up um, as well. Mm -hmm. So folks can look at it and, and pull stuff that you have. Things mm -hmm. that you are taking for granted now, um, the, the, the folks who are affected in St. Vincent and the Grenadines will absolutely need it and need it for a long time. Right. Uh, I don't see this as something that we could snap our fingers and get out of. Mm -hmm. And even if the flows stop this week, um, the, the repair and the, the cleanup will take a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. That's right. We, we need to be invested in this for, for, oh, for quite some time. Yeah, so again, for those of you who are listening from Tobago, Tima is, is doing the collection. Tima has already put out and notice the Tobago mission is collecting down at the Good News Church in Scarborough as well. Um, other agencies are collecting and all are being channeled through TIMA. George Leacock and the folks up at Radio Tambrin also collecting. Um, Diamond Andrews and Damon Edwards and those guys working out of Good News, they will be collecting. So just give right. this stuff as much as you can mm -hmm. and um, we'll channel them through TIMA and uh, and, and, and that will work out. And I can also tell you that my organization, my political organization, will be setting some pop-up shops across the island so that folks can just bring their water, bring their cash and whatever they can. And of course, we will go through the, the, the correct channels with Nemo as, as well. Mm. So, if I may add though, somebody just added on here, and I think this is really important because I never take these things for granted. Please send stuff that are not expired. Um, I think that's that, right. you know, that is important. I work with the homeless and sometimes people do send stuff that are expired. 
um, give the people stuff that you would want to be given to yourself. So I, I endorse that message. Um, before we wrap up, Kimari, I know you had some a question. Do you uh, you still want to um, pose your question or your comment? Yes. We're going to wrap um, up in about five five to ten minutes, gentlemen. Yes, I wanted to add, and the assemblyman touched on the point about the cleanup effort, and this is going to take a long time. Barbados also has its uh, issues with the national cleanup as well, given that the whole island was stretched with the ash. Yeah. Um, but nevertheless, we, we um, are in a position to be able to fund that. But St. Vincent may not be so lucky. So in the aftermath, as things start to wind down, I hope that some persons would, could not only contribute uh, goods for survival, but skills. Um, carpenters and, and, and the different trades meant to assist in the rebuilding effort of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Yeah. Um, when, when it comes to the rebuilding of infrastructure in the country, um, I think our Caribbean brothers and sisters could play a huge role in rebuilding the, the infrastructure as opposed to going outside the community and probably get taken advantage of by larger countries who may have an agenda um, in assisting SVG. So if this is a time where CARICOM is definitely important and being our brother's keeper, now is the time that all Caribbean countries to put whatever aside, whatever egos and, and politics and the like, and make SVG the project of the Caribbean in the rebuilding effort mm -hmm. going forward. I think we saw it with Grenada, and I think that we need to give that support. Uh, Kimari on the endorse that message. We we saw it with Grenada when we all came together. Yeah. Um, and and one of the things that we need to do, um, especially in this time in this season, whenever it, it, it it's upon any country, is just put aside the politics, put aside the foolishness, put aside the crap. Ever everyone will have their opinion, and everybody may see things not going the way they want, or they will hope that things get uh, go better. Um, but be able to plan a hand. Um you know, help to plow that field uh, to, to be a crutch to make that, that, that weight a little lighter so that we all get back to some um, level of normalcy. And once you get back there, then you can step aside and crit crit critique, criticize, and say, hey, we saw this fall. We need to get this. But over and over, I keep saying, with our government, with your government, we are no living. And a lot of, uh, hearing a lot of government ministers saying it, None of them have gone through what they're facing. No, they not. None of them have gone through. A li limited of them have had gone through. SARS had gone through. Whatever. A limited of them had gone through eruption in '79. I certainly, my mother didn't think about getting me then. So you know, um, so there were some things that a number of us did not um, go through, and it becomes a little bit harder for those that are going through. I, I certainly would have hated to be in the position of policy. I certainly would have been hated to be in the position of leadership at this time, where you are looked at, criticized. Um, you are going to be the butt of every meme or every joke or every emoji because people don't see that you are hard working. And I, I, I don't think that at this time, regardless of uh, what people think, that the government is not working hundredfold to make um, St. Vincent or to make Barbados or any of the Caribbean country a better place for their people. And That's so right. we have to look at these things. Um, we have to be serious about ourselves. Yes, it may be a time where you tell yourself, oh, I don't want to do this or I want to do that. But think, is this going to benefit me? Is this going to sustain me? Is this going to make my life better? So all of these things as citizens, we have to think. And I love the, the, the analogy that Jermaine brought. If we were to go to England or get on a plane to somewhere, we would want to be vaccinated. If we were to do this or whatever, if you see the volcano coming down the, the dome, you will no more run. We cannot be reactive. We, you know, we cannot be we cannot be foolish in our thinking. We cannot be ignorant in our, you know whatever process. We have to look. You know, we want to live, and if you want to live, it calls for things like these. As we wind down, give you guys about two minutes each to say what you have to say. I let the host go first. Um, then I'll let the guests end off. Um, from there, mm -hmm. go ahead, Jeremy, because I saw your hand up that you were in school or something. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I, I, I had to ask her permission to speak. Um, and when, you know, I just want to say, um, I, I like Dr. Gonzalez as a prime minister because he's a very straight talker. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I have full confidence in the government of St. Vincent now, right? I would, I, what I want to say to Dr. Gonzalez now and his government at this given time 
is that whilst um, St. Vincent is going through the midst of the crisis right now, there are going to be businessmen out there who are encircling the government, awaiting to, to, to feast on the funds which are going to come in for the rebuilding effort. And mm. I said it in the beginning of the show, and I will end the show by saying this. The people in the red zone and the people of St. Vincent, and when I say the people, I mean the people on the ground are the ones who are to benefit from the economic activity. We do not need businessmen coming out of Barbados, Jamaica, Trinidad, and these other Caracom countries and um, deciding that they're coming into St. Vincent mm -hmm. and they want to make the most money. And for assemblyman, um, I can't, I, I, I Farley. can't Farley. Farley. I remember um, years ago, there was a scandal coming out of Trinidad where, um, I can't remember, I think it was Grenada, the, the, when they had the, 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 the hurricane in Grenada, where the then Prime Minister Kamala Passad Bissessar kind of made the comment that if Trinidad gave help, it would only be on the basis that Trinidad gets back something in return. Mm -mm. That is not happening right now. And, you know, I am glad that our Caribbean, gov the, the, the Caribbean governments have stepped up to the plate and they have recognized the importance of working together. And what is even more important, and I will say this, end on this, we, the citizens of CARICOM, we don't actually sit down and wait on our governments to do anything. You are organizing with your political party. Other people are organizing. Here in Barbados, I see young ladies and young men sending lists to me and saying, hey, we want this for St. Vincent. Because the reality is there's a recognition that these are our CARICOM brothers and we have to assist them. So I end on this. Yeah. Do not let the businessmen um, come and, and, and feast on all the money that is going to come into St. Vincent now. Let the people be the ones to, 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 to survive on it. And CARICOM must come together at the, the, the governmental level. But on the communal level, the citizens of CARICOM will do what they have to do for St. Vincent. Right. I think for me, um, coming from the disaster management background, the real focus is prevention, and now we're into response and recovery. So for me, I think the emphasis for St. Vincent going forward would of course be the recovery process and ensuring that if, the, if or when the volcano erupts again, that the citizens will be one, better informed, two, um, have an earlier notification so that they can evacuate, and, and three, that the persons, that all the citizens understand that it's their personal responsibility to to ensure that they have their own personal um, supplies so that if they have to go to a shelter, they can manage and be a bit more comfortable. Um, as was mentioned before in the program, many times there's a time for regional unity. It's a time for all of our Caribbean neighbors and brothers and sisters to pull together. And for Caribbean leaders now to, to recognize that, you know, you have a lot more support at home or in your region than you think. Because so many times um, there's this whole um, view that the only great assistance that you can get after disaster comes from either the UK or comes to the US. But I do believe that if we look within and we look within our um, geographical area, we'll be able to get the support and the expertise that we need. Thank you, Simon. Um, Kimar Stewart. Yes, um, I want to end by saying this is a very sad situation for the persons on the ground in St. Vincent and my heart goes out to them, my heart goes out to the to the to Barbados as well. Um as we as we go forward from here, I I want to implore into the hearts of people that it should not take disaster for us to assist our regional brothers and sisters. Because in situations like this when you you are vulnerable you you automatically remember that there is a CARICOM. But before disaster, we hardly think about, about, about CARICOM. In some instances, you rather go to the international community to, 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 to benefit as opposed to building our regional block. So in a situation like this, where both Barbados and St. Vincent and could be possibly other countries who, who are attached to the international community by that of debt financing, um, could we now join together to rally for the suspension of debt payments for these two countries? Uh, could we join together to lobby the international community to, to 
to, to raise funds um, unattached and without strings attached in, in, in the development of uh, the, the, the refreshing and replenish of, of these countries. And I think that if, if we come together, as I say, from the level of, of policy, um, be it national, we can go a long way as regional brothers and sisters. Sitting on this, this Zoom, um, all of us are from different countries, but we're still predominantly seeing skin color. And the, the correlation factor among the Caribbean is that we are predominantly a black, a black region. And for, for a black region, I think that speaks to a power that we do not tap into. So, so like, as I said, I'm not to very too far off the point, but I think um, going forward again, we need to be our brother's keeper. And I pray for uh, St. Vincent and the, the country also um, pray for Barbados again. And I would ask for everyone, however you can, however small you can, to contribute to the drives and give your donations, however small, even if it's just a shirt or pants, uh, if it's just one pack of pampers, just a, a bottle, uh, mask, what, whatever you have, if you can give, it would very much be appreciated by someone who uh, is in need. So um, thank you for the, the panel for taking the time out. Um, Mr. Byron, you especially being on the ground, you Mr. Denny, I hope that your families um, be safe and that we will chat again soon uh, in better times. All right. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Samboman. Just let, give you a few minutes to just, um, if you have anything to add and before I go to um, uh, Mr. Denny and then to uh, Byron. So um, I am grateful for this opportunity that, you know, we could have had this discussion and had some groundings with, with my brothers from across the region. It, we must single out in all of this, the University of the West Indies and applaud mm -hmm. the University of the West Indies for the work yeah. that we have done. SRC. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, this is an example of what happens when CARICOM and regionalism works. I'm a graduate of UWI and I have been one of those that have criticized the UWI over and over again in terms of its relevance to Caribbean development. But the UWI during this crisis has proven itself and proven its worth to the region. And why we governments must continue to support the UWI with resources. Because the UWI has been there in terms of directing our every move. I've been looking and listening to uh, the, the professors there as they talk about uh, what has transpired. The, the next thing is I must speak to my own countrymen um, before we close, because I know all too well there is this growing sense of xenophobia um, and cynicism across the country. And trust me, it's not just coming from supporters of UNC. It's coming from supporters of UNC and supporters of PNM. It's coming from supporters that black and supporters that look East Indian. And it's a sickening kind of xenophobia where some are even asking, but you're willing to help other people. How about helping us? The truth is both things can happen simultaneously. The government can take care of its own people as it needs to and should be criticized when it doesn't do that. But that should not and cannot stop the government from doing what needs to happen with regards to helping the, the folks in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I believe the, the statement um, uh, Mr. Beckford you're referring to is when Mrs. Pasavi Sessa um, famously said that Trinidad and Tobago is not the ATM. Right. The, yeah. the ATM, uh, that's right. That, that was actually post Grenada. It wasn't during Grenada time. That was post Grenada. But um, I believe, like with the Grenada crisis, we will send skill skill uh, tradesmen up. We sent um, a barrage of bakus and trucks and so on because we do have the largest pool of heavy equipment in, in the, for the entire um, Caribbean. Um, we, we do have that, so that's somewhere we can lend assistance. 
We even drink, we need a cent, um, our tea and tech men, and that's our Trinidad and Tobago Electricity Commission. We sent them along with the equipment to be there to help we run the wires and, and so on. So there, there is a, a lot that we can do to help and we should do to help. And I want to end by echoing the call that the people who should benefit from the economic activity to the rebuilding should first and foremost be those who are affected and who live within uh, that area. It shouldn't be the smart men and the, the, the smart businessmen from across the region and the world trying to capitalize on this. I mean, that's how capitalist markets work. But the, the first preference must be for those from uh, the area. And to Dr. Gonzalez and those in government and those in opposition and, and members of parliament or area representatives and so on, I want to wish you Godspeed. I know you will have some sleepless nights. I know you will have many tears to cry. I know you will look at your accounts balance and not know where the next cent will come from to pay for these things. I know you will be worried. I know you will have heated debates and arguments um, post this crisis. So I know it will be a tough one. So I wish you Godspeed. Um, I, I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. And Grenade St. Vincentians and uh, are, are, my, are my family, family members. And, and, and so I wish you nothing but the absolute best. I wish you'll get out of this quickly. We are praying for you. Uh, we are pooling our resources to send to you. And I will use whatever leadership capabilities and influence I have in my own country to ensure the narrative is such that people will want to give, 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 give so that uh, our brothers and sisters in St. Vincent and the Grenadines will come out of this better, stronger. This is an opportunity to rebuild even better than you were before. It's in all our interests that you get back up on your feet and get going again. Godspeed, everyone. Thank you, Assemblyman. Um, Mr. Anthony, yes, sir. Um, you close, your closing remarks, I think you would like to add as well. You have to arm you. All right, gentlemen. Um, first of all, let me just thank you for the opportunity. I did not intend to stay uh, this long. Yes, uh, yes, program. I remember you told me that, but thank you. All right. Um, you know, but the, the, the discussion was, was pretty much healthy. Uh, but just to say that, you know, we here in St. Vincent and the Grandines, um, we face a dark hour. Our last volcanic eruption was in 1979, prior to, you know, what took place last Friday. And uh, it has happened during a time where we've been faced with the COVID-19 pandemic. And the last time around, uh, we were disrupted for about a month or thereabouts. But the experts, the scientists are saying to us, you know, that this could possibly run for three, four months or even more, you know. Um, and in a time of, of, of COVID-19, and um, you have the situation, as I mentioned early on, that we don't know what the hurricane season holds for us, uh, whether here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines or in the Caribbean. Um, that in itself, you know, is a serious challenge. Um, I, I heard, I believe, was uh, Assemblyman speaking about, you know, the, the leadership that we have in place at this point in time. I think other persons would have mentioned it, the leadership of Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez. And I, I honestly don't think, you know, that there can be another person um, here in St. Vincent, Diana Grandis, and possibly in the region um, who is well placed, you know, to, to, to oversee, you know, what is happening in this beloved country of mine. But, you know, I just want to make the appeal again, you know, to persons who are viewing persons throughout the Caribbean, because I understand that uh, this is seen, uh, you know, across the Caribbean, um, whatever in donation that you can make, um, be it water, um, whatever other essential item, um, it is going to be much appreciated. And we here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines will be more than thankful as far as that is concerned. Just one final thing, um, the whole matter of uh, GoFundMe accounts. Um, I understand that there have been some persons who have been setting up GoFundMe accounts via Facebook, and I am appealing to persons not to be hoodwinked, so to speak, by those um, accounts. I mentioned Nemo. That's the only body responsible for the whole matter of administrating and dealing with matters of finance of, of, of this disaster that we have here in St. Vincent and Grandines. And if you need to make any contribution, be it financial, I have provided a number already for Nemo. I'll repeat it once again, one 784 
456-2975. Give them a call and they will direct you as to how best uh, you can make your financial contributions. Gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Byron, uh, final word is with you, sir. Well, I must say, God is our refuge and strength. Mm -hmm. A very present help in time of trouble. Amen. And he said, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Mm -hmm. I will say of the Lord, he is my mm -hmm. refuge and fortress. My God, in him will I trust. And one thing about our nation, St. Vincent and the Grenadine, is that in times of natural disasters and with the help of the Almighty God and our Caribbean people and those in the diaspora, we know we are a resilient people and with God's help, we can get this done. And I just wanna say thanks to the seismic people, personnel, Dr. Robertson, and also so when, when you mentioned, when um, the gentleman from Tobago mentioned Dr. Gonzalez, sometimes I scratch my head and I normally say sometimes, how does he make it? But I know all of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and none of us are perfect, but there's one thing he always say, God will see us through. And I want to say thank you, Dr. Gonzalez, and for everyone who have lent the helping and who yet continue to stretch forth a hand to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And we can assure you that whatsoever will be sent will be dispersed to those who are in need. God bless you, and thank you very much for having me. Thank you, gentlemen. Right. It's been an awesome show. Um, this was put together very short uh, moment. I call some of you guys like minutes to the show. Um, this shows that you guys love your countries, love um are in tune for what is going on around the um say Mr. and the and the Grenadines right now. And we are all passionate about helping. We are all caring for our fellow men, uh, whether they be in our country or not. I, I said this is also close to me because my wife um grew up in St. Vincent and her family, the entire family is there. She's been calling, so I've been hearing. Every day call, well, not even every day call, every hour calls that she makes out to them. And so I, I'm in a house where I, I'm hearing every single day. And um, the calls to St. Vincent, how they're doing. I have friends there. But needless to say, you guys came on a short notice. We want to also say thank you to Dr. John who um, came off uh, because he said he had to go do some work within the community center. Uh, kudos to you, Dr. John. Kudos to your team, despite... However, um, whatever, as you know, go out there, do what you have to do for your country. I echo everybody again, follow the right channels, stick to the right people. Do not just go and put your money onto other sites or send your parcels and your items all over the Caribbean. And then, um, you know, don't get to the people, follow. Uh, I want to say a special thank you um, to Barbados today here in Barbados for carrying this um, live as well. There are you know, over 199,000 followers, so I know that they're carrying us strong. also want to say a special thank you to VC3, who is carrying us live as well, over uh, 32, 33 th uh, plus thousand followers. And, and it speaks to these persons, these organizations, these um, media houses willing to put us on at such short notice to be able to show and be able to um, for people to see. I also want to thank all those on the the show um, that have been commenting. People said they want a part two. <laughs> uh, people said they love it. Uh, it's already been getting some support. So thank you to all those persons from Tobago. Um, all right. Benny, all your supporters as well. Um, but I see some families and some friends saying bless up. And um, people are really encouraged by you, Jeremy. You are not so hated tonight. Um, <laughs> people really <laughs> liked you tonight. Funny, he's the most hated man the on the boss. show. But uh, we love you brought you. some very interesting points. And <laughs> I want to say thank you and ask that we keep in touch as well, gentlemen. And uh, wherever we can help, whatever we will, um, as a show, we will be able to... I have people from Connecticut. Sorry, people are saying people from Connecticut, New York, um, people from Tobago, people from Barbados. 
people from all over the country are connected to us. That shows the strength of the unity, um, unity and the strength of the, and obviously you have to take the, 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 the net, the internet and all of it to be able to push us. Um, whatever we can do, we will, I will contact with you, um, Denny, and the show, we will donate food, we will donate water, we will donate clothing. I have a lot, I have a warehouse full of clothing. <laughs> I'm willing to donate all to you guys. I have food. We, we have a lot of stuff and we are going to connect with, I'm going to connect with you to make sure we connect to the right channels and we are going to give the show, Jeremy, we love Jeremy and could never be the most hated person. <laughs> Sorry, Jeremy. Somebody All else. right. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, but yeah, guys, thank you very much. All the viewers, uh, well over 500 plus persons viewed at one time, uh, hundreds of comments. We want to thank you, Barbies today, V3, VC3. We want to thank you, Farley, Assemblyman Farley. You're one of the youngest, most inspirational persons I know from the time I met you years, years ago. Um, you, 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 you really push, you, you know, you're younger than most of us here and you are a, a leader in your country as an assemblyman, as a leader, you took up the mantle to get into politics early. You're my encouragement. You're my rock as it relates to future uh, politics. Um, so can, I ask, yes, sir. can I ask yes. the assemblyman a question quickly? Oh, uh, that? Sir, oh. Oh, um, yes. will you be, the, will you be the one taking that position to break the daylight? <clears throat> <laughs> On mute. <laughs> In terms of breaking it, the lock is, is not as simple as that. But um, I, I, the last proposal my team placed on the table is that we should collectively agree to some mediators and we work it out. And in fact, I have offered uh, for us to have uh, an amalgamation, sort of a working together from the two teams. And I have already offered the other side that they could take the prize, the position of having the chief secretary, which is equivalent to perhaps a premier a minister, so to speak, and I'll take the deputy role. I don't mind taking that role right. and find a way to, to have a unified government in the interim until we can return to the polls. Because oh, given how the law is structured, we cannot even call fresh elections at the moment while we have this stalemate. We will have to be constituted in order to call fresh elections. So All right. to, to forfeit uh, the prize, the position of being the head of the executive, just for us to get it. So, so I've, we have put some things on the table and let's see how, how okay. that goes and, and hopefully we'll be able to allow good sense to prevail. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, well, we wish you all the best. Wish you all the best. Um, Dr. De Sorry, Denny, I don't know why I'm calling you doctor. You seem like a doctor in my book. Um, I hope yeah. You yeah. Huh? <laughs> yeah, and um, Byron, your guys are in St. Vincent. I ask God's blessing upon both of you guys and the country at large. Um, Byron, your immigration officers, I know you're a frontline worker as well. Um, Denny, you're out there with your station and your crew, so I know you're out front as well. You're inhaling all the ashes. You're, you're directly involved in this manner, uh, <clears throat> in this situation, sorry. God's blessing on both of you on the country. I pray safety for your family and safety for yourself. And please reach out to us, gentlemen. All, thank you very much for short, for the short, um, coming on short notice. God's blessing on everybody. Have a blessed and wonderful good night. Facebook, God bless you. thank you. Yes. We're going to end our, <coughs> sorry, we're going to end our live with Facebook. Thank you, each and every one of you.